Please welcome Atlantic Senior Vice President and the General Manager of Atlantic Live, Candace Montgomery. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us at our In Pursuit of Happiness Forum. I'm Candace Montgomery, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Atlantic Live. If you were with us this morning, we're happy to have you back. If it's your first time, welcome. We've assembled a stellar lineup this afternoon to help you and help us deepen our understanding of the principles and work needed to pursue what truly brings enduring happiness. Please silence your cell phones, but keep them close by. We'd love to hear your thoughts about In Pursuit of Happiness, so be sure to share a few words on social using hashtag TAF23. Now I'd like to introduce Arthur Brooks, Atlantic contributing writer and author of new book, Build the Life You Want, The Art and Science of Getting Happier, to kick us off. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Enjoy the show. Hey. Thank you. Thank you so very much. What a delight to see all of you and have an opportunity to talk, to kick off this session on my favorite topic, which is happiness. I am the most privileged person perhaps in the world because that's what I do for a living is write, speak, and teach about the science of happiness. I'm trained as a social scientist and, and at this point in my career, I get to teach a class on the science of happiness at the Harvard Business School and write about it for the best magazine in the world. What a wonderful privilege that is. Now, when people meet you in the United States for the first time, they always ask you the question, what do you do? That's how you break the ice, with parties in America. I also have lived about you know, half of my adult life in Spain, where the icebreaker question is, where are you going on vacation? <laughs> That's a mentally healthier question to ask. But be that as it may, when people ask what I do for a living, I say, well, among other things, I teach at a business school. And they say, well, marketing, finance, Accounting, supply chain management, something <laughs> practical like that. I say, no, I teach happiness, and they, they think I'm lying. <laughs> but it's true. As a matter of fact, it's a class that's now so oversubscribed that I have 180 students, I have 400 on the waiting list, and there's even an illegal Zoom link they think I don't know about. <laughs> so what are we teaching them in the happiness class? This is not a a feel-good kind of thing. This is no woo-woo at all. On the contrary, this is a science class about how you can manage your life, which is the reason that my column in The Atlantic is called How to Build a Life. And my new book is Build the Life You Want that, 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 that suggests there's some action to it. Now, on my first day of class, I start off with this question to the students. Look, you, you spent all your elective points. We have a market at HBS, as you might imagine. You, you spent all your elective points to get into the happiness class. You must know what it is. What's happiness? And a cold column. And I'll pick somebody out of the, the first class, and they always say the same kind of thing. It's the feeling I get when I'm with the people that I love. It's how I feel when I'm doing what I enjoy. And I say, wrong. <laughs> happiness is not a feeling. And that's incredibly good news. If happiness were just a feeling, you'd be chasing it and hoping to get it, and Good luck. It would have to do with how you slept last night or what you ate for breakfast or whether you got yelled at by your spouse or whatever. Happiness is not a feeling. Feelings are evidence of happiness. Kind of like the smell of the turkey is evidence of your Thanksgiving dinner. No, happiness is something more tangible than that. And so we start off with a little definition and let's do that now. Happiness is a combination of three things. Just as your Thanksgiving dinner is a combination of three macronutrients, namely protein, carbohydrates, and fat, your happiness is a combination of enjoyment, satisfaction, and purpose. Those are the three parts of happiness. Now, this is incredibly good news, friends. Some of you have high and intense negative feelings, and some of you are more ebullient and naturally really happy because of your feelings. We're all different. But the truth of the matter is that if we understand the component parts of happiness, we can study, get better at, change our habits, share, and become happier people. Enjoyment, satisfaction, and purpose. Now, I only have six minutes here to kick off this session, so I can't give you the whole semester. <laughs> but I will tell you that to get more enjoyment and satisfaction and purpose in your life, you really 
you really need only to do four things. You need to have a portfolio of four habits. There's a lot of stuff that goes into happiness you don't need to worry about. Don't worry about your genetics. They control a lot of your mood from moment to moment, it's true. But if you have your habits right, you manage your genetics. And don't worry about your circumstances, good and bad, your bad luck and your good luck. That affects your happiness too, but it comes and goes. Worry about the things that you can manage. What should you be thinking about? What's in your happiness investment plan? What's your happiness 401k? Four things. Your faith, your family, your friends, and your work. Now, let me tell you briefly what all of these things are and what they have in common. Let me tell you what they're not. When I say faith, I don't mean my faith. I'm a Catholic. I like it. But I'm a social scientist. And I will tell you that it's much broader than a specific religion. It's not even a religion, necessarily. It's not even spiritual, necessarily. It's a, a perspective on life that's bigger than you. It's a notion that life can transcend your narrow existence. Why? Because you need to get small if you want to be happy. Otherwise, life is just exhausting and boring and tedious. My job, my commute, my money, my sandwich, it's horrible. <laughs> it's like watching the same episode of the same sitcom over and over and over again compulsively without relief. You need peace and perspective, and you can get that in many ways. Maybe studying the stoic masters. Maybe walking in nature without devices. Maybe studying the fugues of Johann Sebastian Bach. Maybe a meditation practice, or maybe like me, the faith of your youth. But you must do something. Faith. Family. Family life. Defined in different ways for different people, but you know who they are. And you know if you're not talking to them and you have a schism, how painful that is. Sometimes it's inevitable. In cases of abuse, I got it. But let me tell you a shocking fact about America today. One in six of us is not speaking to a direct family member because of politics. That, my friends, is insane. Abuse is one thing, but differences of opinion are not abuse. Don't do that to yourself. Third is friendship. Now, friendship seems pretty straightforward, but, but it isn't, is it? I work with a lot of very successful people. Over the course of what I do, I teach at the Harvard Business School right for the Atlantic. So I meet a lot of people that are really kind of going on. And they're so lonely. They're, they're surrounded by people all day. Leaders, they're so lonely. Why? I'll ask, how many friends do you have? Hundreds. That means zero. <laughs> Why? Because if you tell me you have 300 friends, you know what they all have in common? They're deal friends, not real friends. You know the difference between real friends and deal friends? Deal friends are useful. Real friends are useless. <laughs> I don't mean worthless. I have those too. <laughs> Do you have enough useless friends? Number three. And last but not least, it's, it's work. But when I talk about work, I'm not talking about a high paying job or a prestigious job. No, no, no. I'm talking about just two characteristics. I've looked at public sector, private sector, nonprofit sector, above average income, below average income, high education, low education, blue collar, white collar, no collar. I've looked at every kind of job. None of that stuff matters for joy. What really matters is just two characteristics. And these are the two things to look for. And if you employ people, give them. Number one is you need to earn your success, to feel like you're creating value with your work and that it's being recognized and rewarded. That's number one. Number two, you need to serve other people, and you need to know who they are. You need to be able to get a face in your mind of somebody who actually needs you, which is the basis of, of happiness that comes through work. Earn success and service to others. So that's what I mean when I say faith, family, friends, and work, so that you can get all of the, 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 the enjoyment, satisfaction, and purpose that makes up the happiness that can make you the happiest person that you could possibly be. So what, in six minutes, I've given you a lot of material. It's probably been seven. Let me leave you with the one thing that will make you remember it all, the linchpin for all of this stuff. Because people ask me all the time, you know, you teach science of happiness and you write about it every single week. That's a lot to remember. Tell me one thing to remember. What's the big idea? There is a big idea. Faith, family, friends, and work, love of the divine, Love of your family, love of your friends, love of everybody through the way you earn your daily bread. 
This is the punchline of it all. If you want to remember one thing to get happier over the course of your life, to dedicate your ideas to, your energy to, your affection to, your attention to, it's love. My last word is this as we go on to the important conversations that we're going to have with Bob Waldinger and Cheryl Strayed. And we're going to talk about so many facets of this in the coming minutes. Is that happiness, my friends, is love. Let's live that, and life will just get better and better. Thank you.